What a wonderful day. It's finally getting springtime and uh, of course I'm jumping right into it with another pit fire. So today I'm gonna do yet another experiment. So I have these, maybe you can see here, but these pots are somewhat a little bigger than what I've been doing before in my pit fire. So they're a little bit bigger and also I'm gonna do another experiment because I'm gonna try, I actually did this successfully in my Rago kill. I'm gonna wrap um, this newspaper around the top and then I'm gonna seal it with uh, tin foil because what I want to create is um, is a black top um, and by wrapping the newspaper and the tin foil this will of course burn and because of the tin foil um, the carbon won't be able to escape so it's gonna attach to the clay hopefully and uh, because of the uh, oxygen reduction in there it should get black so let's see how that goes now I'm almost done packing my kill or the pit. Uh, I only have these two bases left. And this is another thing that I'm, I'm experimenting with. I've done a couple of bases like this, where I only partially uh, put some uh, ferric uh, chloride on it. And that looks really, really nice. So I'll show you tomorrow. Um, so here I have packed most of the kill. There's uh, two big pots at the bottom and then a layer with uh, four more pots or five is it and um, then the last two is going to go on top here and some of them have been wrapped in tin foil some of them have not they do develop different kind of colors and of course without the tin foil you get a little bit a little more effect of the flames and the ashes um, so it's a different expression so i will mix it up today and um, in a few minutes i will light the fire now we put some alcohol on it because alcohol is always good. So, and this particular bottle tastes like shit anyway. So that should be good. Now we're gonna light it, see how it goes. Oh, it's kind of windy today. So. <laughs> I may have put a little bit too much in this um, particular fire. Um, there's, I think, nine pots or something in it. There's a little bit too much, and two of them are very big, but I think it will go okay. So we'll see. Sometimes you can see these green flames. I think you can almost see it here. And of course that's um, some of the chemicals. I think this is the copper carbonate that is, uh, is burning. Um, and just to inform you, I'm standing out of the wind, so I'm not getting these fumes in my lungs, which is probably not too good. But it looks so beautiful. And then of course, those fumes are going to attach to the the pots and make these wonderful colors. So, looking forward to see how that goes. So far, the fire seems perfect. Uh, it's a little bit windy today, which is perfect because it blows uh, some air into the, um, to the fire and it makes it a little bit hotter. I was just checking with this uh, infrared uh, thermometer and actually one of the parts I could almost see it. So I was checking the, the temperature and it was almost 800 degrees, which is really, really good. That's in the high end of the flames. So. I'm expecting this to be really, really good, but I won't know before tomorrow morning. Um, when it's uh, burned out a little bit more, I will put the lid on and then I will uh, uh, choke it a little bit um, and I will leave it there 
uh, overnight and it will slowly burn out probably early in the morning and then hopefully in the beginning of tomorrow I'll be able to open it. Good morning! It's Sunday. I just brewed my first cup of coffee. It's a little bit too early for a Sunday. It's only more than eight o'clock. It's so difficult to wait when you have uh, a kill there, yeah, a pit there. Yeah. Um, so I haven't opened it up yet. It's uh, still very warm, which is a good sign because I want as slow a cooling as possible. And uh, when it's still warm the next morning, that suggests to me that we had a very good and very slow cooling. Um, a little bit of fire going on all night. So that should be good. Now the big question comes, how does it look? Is it cracked? Did it survive? How are the colors? So let's take a look. Now that looks good. Uh, there's nothing uh, broken as far as I can see, at least the first ones. And uh, they're still warm, but I mean, you can almost touch them. I think I think I will wear a glove, but it's it's very good. So let's try and see if we can get one of them up. Huh? That looks interesting. Now, when uh, I get all this dust off uh, or ashes off, and I um, and they cool down a little bit more. And of course, when we polish them, um, they will shine up a lot more. But this looks interesting. Um, I'm very curious about this one in particular. I can't move that yet, so I'll have to wait a little bit. As you can see, there's a lot of lot of dust, a lot of ashes uh, during them around. So it's, so it's actually a very good idea. I should have brought that. I have it here to wear a dust mask because. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to inhale all that um, ash this to your lungs. So I will now um, go ahead and um, take out the pot slowly. I think they might need a little bit more cooling before I can take them out. So um, once I've done that, it's a little bit difficult with the handheld camera and all. So I will just um, show you when I have taken them all out. So now I got the first couple of layers out of the pit. Uh, and most of it looks really interesting. As I just mentioned, um, we'll have to to, um, to brush off all the ashes and dust and stuff, and they of course needs to be uh, polished, um, and they will look much more um, strong in the colors. Most of it looks really interesting, but there is one or two that have a small problem. As you can see here, this is the terracicolata that have uh, peeled off. Um, and maybe I can I can polish it and brush it and make it interesting still. I don't know yet. But the problem with when this happens um, is typically two things. It could uh, either be because uh, uh, the bisque firing was not um, adequate for that, uh, for that hair cigalata, although I have bisqued them the same way that I usually do, um, to 950 degrees. Um, and uh, the other thing is that I could have applied the, the terciculata a little too thick and then it can peel off as well. So I don't know for sure, but um, it's always a bit tricky with terciculata because you add that extra layer and that can go wrong. But now comes the most exciting thing because in the bottom of my pit is the two big vases that I did. And they're bigger than any other vase that I have done before in, um, in a pit fire. One of them is so big that it can almost just be there or can actually be there on, on the side so it's about 50 centimeter high and um, so I've never done that before with, with bigger things and um, so I hope they survived. So let's take a look. Here's the small one of the big ones uh, and so far it looks awesome. Uh, some nice black areas, some reds, yellows, some white spots and I, oh I like that. Now the interesting part here is, you remember, I wrapped up the top uh, with newspaper and tinfoil. It's still smoking a little bit. And the interesting thing is now, did it actually turn black or at least dark up there? That's what I wanted. Yes, 
not entirely black, but definitely, um, definitely darker at the top. Still some interesting um, patterns there. So. Some interesting yellow. Uh, I think once this is, um, this will be uh, burnished or not burnished, polished. Um, it will look really, really good. So I will take the next one out. The first and the good news is the big one survived. So that's good. And the colors on this one looks really, really good. Uh, oh my God. So let's see if we unwrap this. Um, Newspaper tin foil thing at the top. Oh, this one didn't actually turn out so dark. Um, so, but all the newspaper are gone. So it did burn. Maybe it didn't seal well enough, or I don't know. But nevertheless, it looks really interesting. Now all the parts have been taken out and they're cooling down a little bit before I start brushing them uh, to get all the dust and the ashes off. Um, I sometimes use a little bit of steel wool if there's something that is stuck to it. Sometimes uh, some of the ashes or something burn into it and um, you can use the steel wool to take it off. The steel wool is a very, very fine particles, so it doesn't leave any any scratches or traces on your on your parts. So I use that. And then once I have the surface cleaned uh, the way I want it, then I will uh, polish it. Uh, I use two different things depending on the pot. Sometimes I use uh, mink oil. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very fluid uh, sort of wax it, and it leaves a very nice silky shiny layer. Not super shiny, but kind of silky. I also use a fluid uh, that I get from Raguaya in, in Holland. It's not so expensive, um, about, what is it, $15 or something for a liter, and it goes a long way. Uh, it's a sealant, uh, so I use it on the inside always, because that will actually leave the pot in a state where you can, you can have water in it. It will be a little bit dense on the outside, but it can hold water. But I also sometimes use it on the outside because it leaves a very nice shine. And it's actually very easy to apply. You just put it on with the brush and make sure there's no you know, spots on it. And it leaves a very beautiful uh, shine. So I use that sometimes if I want that. Um, but I'll go ahead and do that. And um, thank you for today. I will show you a few pictures of the final parts at the end of this video. I hope you will uh, subscribe. Uh, and like the video if you do like it and come back and see more. Uh, I have many more videos on the way. Thank you.